They're so small that more than one could probably fit on the head of a pin, and that's part of the problem. The problem is ticks, more specifically the black-legged tick, sometimes called the deer tick. These tiny ticks, barely the size of a poppy seed, are the main conveyors of Lyme disease, among other lesser well-known tick-borne illnesses like anaplamosis, babesiosis, and Powassan virus. And during the summer months, when many people enjoy getting outside to go for hikes or to garden, is when the chance of being bitten by a tick is higher than at other times in the year. Ticks are an especially big problem in Bennington County, which has been among the state's leaders for years in incidents of Lyme disease. But Lyme disease is prevalent across the state, and its incidence is rising, according to the Vermont Health Department. The best way to avoid Lyme disease is to not get bitten by one of the strains of ticks which carry it in the first place, says Dr. Angie Van Berkelier, the chief medical officer at the Battenkill Valley Health Center in Arlington. So if you want to avoid getting one of those diseases, you want to, get, you want to avoid getting bitten by a tick. Uh, and the strategy there is um, you could choose not to go out in the outdoors, but generally speaking, we like people to, you know, we're an outdoor state. Uh, people, people like to, to uh, do sports and enjoy recreation outdoors. Um, so in that case, you want to make sure that you're well covered. And that means spraying exposed skin with DEET uh, and the Centers for Disease Control and the, and the Vermont uh, Department of Health both have uh, good information on which, uh, which insect repellents uh, will protect you against ticks. Um, for your clothes, there's a, a spray called permethrin, uh, which uh, will uh, basically repel ticks. And um, that is good for a number of washes. So you spray it on your clean clothes, for, for example, your gardening clothes. Uh, and uh, then you tuck your pants into your socks so that there's no exposed skin for, this, for the ticks to crawl up onto. Uh, and that's relatively effective. It turns out though that there's no one strategy that is perfect. So you really have to try a little bit of everything. Keep your lawn short, um, uh, avoid, uh, avoid areas where there are a lot of deer since they carry the ticks. Uh, ticks tend to, to crawl onto people. Uh, they sit on the edge of a long blade of grass and wait for something to brush by and that's how they attach. They don't fall out of trees or jump out at you. Um, they, they're waiting for you to brush past them. So if you're going to be in brush, make sure you're well covered. And then at the end of the day, um, if you're coming in from outdoor activities, you want to do a tick check and you want to check everywhere. Uh, all the areas that you might not normally look, uh, you know, below the belt, behind the ears, uh, at the hairline, um, in the belly button, uh, and remove any ticks that you see immediately. And then if you have a rash, I would say anything bigger than a silver dollar, even if it doesn't look anything like a bullseye, call your doctor. You want to talk to your primary care doctor about this. If, uh, if it turns out to be Lyme disease, you'll be treated. The other thing you want to look out for is any kind of fever because although Lyme disease presents with a rash, the other diseases that ticks spread don't necessarily cause rashes, but they cause fevers and they can make people very, very sick. If you do end up contracting it or think you've contracted it, it's important to treat it as quickly as possible because if the disease takes hold, it can be a long time before you're clear of it, as Katie Brooks of Dorset tells us. She struggled with it for three years. And last year into the fall and needed IV treatment every night that I had to give myself uh, once a day with antibiotics to attack the central nervous system, which I was suffering from memory loss. And being my age, some doctors were saying, oh, it's um, early Alzheimer's. And so I finally got to the bottom of it and went to um, Dr. George at the Bennington Hospital, who's the chief of infectious disease there. And she sent me to um, Dartmouth Hitchcock to the chief of infectious disease there because he treats the chronic cases. And he had a similar patient who was diagnosed with all early Alzheimer's and she begged for antibiotics through the IV uh, to see if it would help. And sure enough, both of us within six weeks of this treatment had regained our memory. I was looking at my phone sometimes 20 times a day because I never really left my house because I had no memory and either did short term and neither did this other patient. Her husband had to drive her to the grocery store and drive her to her appointments because she couldn't remember where to go. And within uh, six weeks, 
I no longer had to look at my phone to see what time it was 20 times a day or what day it was or what I had to do. That's how bad and how chronic it can be. And there are people out there that have not been cured. There's a friend in Manchester who has a company called The Well Connection and she treats chronic cases of people who have had Lyme. She had um, a bout of Lyme that affected her heart and she was in the hospital for weeks and was so debilitated, she really couldn't do anything for a couple of years. And this is how sometimes Lyme can affect you. So it's uh, not one of these things that, oh, I think I'll just go out and pick some flowers and those grasses out there off the highway, or I'm gonna go take a little hike and I'll just sprain my ankles. You know, go the full route. Don't risk getting this chronic Lyme, which is an epidemic. In response to the high frequency at which Lyme or other tick-borne diseases are being reported, the Southwestern Vermont Medical Center is making a presentation at the Manchester Community Library on Thursday, July 27th, to discuss the disease and what you should do if you think you've been a victim of a tick bite. Dr. Trey Dobson of the SVMC will be one of the presenters. And, and we're going to start with a basic presentation. We're going to go over the questions we get asked every day by our patients. So this is not about cutting edge research um, on tick-borne illnesses and their treatments, although we will be talking about some of the newer things coming down the road. Um, so it's an opportunity to present you know, what the prevalence is of tick-borne illness, which is everyone knows is increasing significantly, maybe what some of those causative factors are, what we can do to prevent, how we diagnose, how we treat, and then field questions from the audience. So first off, the prevalence around the country has expanded significantly for reasons that we're not certain about. Um, there's probably a relationship to the deer population and the deer population close to human population. But there's other factors in there. Warming certainly may be a part, and it just may be that the disease itself is becoming very successful as it evolves. And of course, it's not just Lyme disease. That's something else we'll be talking about, is there are many other tick-borne illnesses, some which do not affect Vermont, so we won't be talking about those, but we'll be talking about the main ones that affect Vermont, which is about five or six diseases um, and probably growing. I want to present what we know, um, and there are a lot of unknowns, and, and certainly we admit to that, and we, we're excited about the research that's coming up, but how we uh, diagnose the disease, how we treat it, and then more importantly, how people can prevent the disease. In addition to checking yourself and your kids, check the household pets too. Dogs and cats, it turns out, are home to lots of ticks and can be easily transmitted to people. The SVMC presentation at the Manchester Library starts at 5.30 p.m. on July 27th. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.